And for that, let's go across to those visuals of that tsunami that's just about to hit the coast of Japan over there. Remember, Japan has just been struck by a huge earthquake, one of perhaps the biggest earthquakes that we've seen in 10 years over there. 8.9 is the magnitude. Uh, earlier on, there was a tsunami alert that was issued, but now the tsunami finally making landfall. These are perhaps really interesting visuals because this is perhaps also the first time that we're getting to see something like this happen live on Indian television. The last time the tsunami struck over here in Southeast Asia and we saw huge damage in Sri Lanka and also around the Indian coast, we never really got to see the tsunami. But over here, you're seeing huge waves move towards the coast in unprecedented footage. But like we said, the Japanese earthquake is occupying center stage, especially for Asian bourses over here, Japan's Nikkei dropped about 1.7% after news broke. We also saw a huge sell-off in the yen that dropped to its lowest level since February against the dollar. So there you have those pictures coming in. So far, uh, uh, most offices managed to evacuate in time, but our reporters from uh, uh, Tokyo have been telling us that offices were evacuated, but there's been one building in central Tokyo which did catch fire. We'll get you more details of perhaps some damage that's been reported from that particular place. Uh, the, mag the epicenter so far uh, has been off Tokyo. It's closer over there to a city called Nagoya. We'll uh, tell you geographically where that fits in. But for now, you can see those huge waves. Earlier on, there were also some earlier visuals where you could see the waves sweep in, picking up everything that lay in its path. So presumably, there's going to be a, a lot of damage. Um, there was also reports of uh, some sort of damage around some factories. Our reporter was telling us Sony's factory hasn't really been affected, so we'll wait and see what happens over there. But there have also been reports that Japanese construction stocks have begun to pick up. For now, uh, these are visuals coming to you live, and uh, that's pictures of a huge, almost 10-meter wave uh, crashing towards the shore. I think, you know, the, the concerning part here is when you talk about the waves actually shaping up right now, you can see live visuals that are actually coming in right now. The other thing is you've got a host of things actually being shut down right now in Japan itself. Mm -hmm. You're also getting a lot of aftershocks. In fact, we're just getting reports that you could possibly have a 7.1 aftershock, which has hit Japan is what USGS is saying as of right now. That's the other concerning part. You also have tsunami warnings raised for areas along the J Japan southwest coast also. So that's the other important update which we're picking up right now. Tokyo port is actually closed after water gates. After water gates were actually uh, came in after the quake that came, uh, we just heard about a couple of hours back. Same time, you also have whole the entire coastline, which is under somewhat of a warning as of right now, is what you're picking up right now. The same time, remember the magnitude has now been revised to nearly 8.9, is what you're seeing. And the tsunami that we're talking about, you can see the fact that how the coast is actually being impacted right now by all these tsunamis, is what we're noticing. All right. Earlier on, we heard that the Japanese main airport, Naruta Airport, had been shut down. But now we're hearing that two of the runways have been open. Also, the subway in Tokyo has been shut down. The bullet train is no longer uh, working. They have shut it down because of the earthquake. Uh, remember, phone lines are down. So if anyone trying to call out of Japan, it's going to be difficult. The phone lines are uh, all down. Electricity has been shut off to prevent fires. That's one of the biggest concerns that happens when you have an earthquake. Buildings get damaged, fires get started. All right, looks like we have somebody speaking. Uh, we'll try and get your translation and bring you up to date uh, with uh, what uh, this person is saying. And uh, just to bring your sense also about uh, electricity, we'll tell you about that. But let's try and listen in. Providing as much information as possible. We are going to provide information to those affected by the disaster in cooperation with local governments. That was Tetsuro Fukuyama, uh, Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary. And here's some live footage of uh, in Chiba Prefecture. Obviously, some fire is going off. And, and it looks like um, some kind of plant there, uh, some kind of uh, plant there. We do not know if it's uh, a chemical plant or what type of plant it is at this time, but it looks like some plant is on fire. And this is live coverage of Ichihara City in Chiba Prefecture. We are still feeling a bit of aftershocks in the studio as we speak. This is live coverage of Miyagi Prefecture from our helicopter in Sendai area. Tsunamis hitting a large area. 
destroying farmland, homes, sweeping away cars and trucks. The tsunami had been moving upstream. We're seeing several sets of tsunami hitting Miyagi Prefecture, Senda area. For those of you living near the coast, please do move to higher ground as soon as possible. And for those of you who have just tuned into NHK World, a major earthquake hitting Japan Friday afternoon with Japan's meteorological agency saying the quake measuring 8.4 magnitude, one of the largest to ever hit Japan. The agency has issued a warning, a tsunami warning for Japan's Pacific coast. Obviously that tsunami already landing, several sets landing in northern Japan. In northeastern Japan's Iwate Prefecture tsunami, waves of over four meters were observed soon after the quake. The agency is warning that the tsunami could reach between six and ten meters. Some of the tsunami already engulfing farmlands, homes. We do not know the extent of damage or the number of casualties at this time. Obviously the situation is extremely fluid. Things changing on a minute by minute basis. Transportation, the majority of the Tokyo area has been stopped. All transportation in north, northern Japan, train lines have been, uh, it's been stopped. This looks like it's the airport. This looks, this is coverage of Sendai Airport. Obviously completely flooded. This is coverage of Sendai Airport in northern Japan where the earthquake has hit the hardest. Magnitude 8.4 about an hour and 30 minutes ago. In Miyagi Prefecture, northeastern Japan, an intensity of 7 on Japan's seismic scale. That's the largest from 0 to 7.